Hey there kids and welcome back. This is lesson 27 in module 6 and will likely be the last video of the school year because there really isn't much left in the books. It's just kind of working independently, processing the information, giving feedback to your teachers, thinking independently, showing them that you understand. So, uh, And then the 24 and 25, it's just kind of homework stuff. It, it's just weird how the book kind of skips from 22 and the problem sets and then it goes into these little homework activities and it's kind of like fun and games and spend some time with your family and that's all. It's cool. Uh, then we had lesson 26 video and the template but here we are at lesson 27. It's really like the last opportunity to do word problems. So. Let's just work this through and then we'll be done. This is a momentous occasion. Feels very special. Anyway, let's get to it. So use the RDW process to solve the word problems below. By now you should know that RDW is not a TV show. It is, or not a character on Arthur. It is actually read, draw, write. So we're gonna read it and then we're gonna draw something and then we're gonna write something out uh, in your answer and explain your thinking. So, Julia completes her homework in an hour. There's our hole. She spends seven twelfths of the time, the hour, doing her math homework and one sixth of the time, the hour, practicing her spelling words. The rest of the time she spends reading. How many minutes does Julia spend reading? So, we need to create a tape diagram because now that we read it, we need to draw a picture. So let's draw the hour in a tape diagram. And I know that since I'm going to be breaking this hour up into likely 12 parts, also noting six of them, that if I break it up into minutes, because the final question says how many minutes, um, I know that 60 is divisible by 12 evenly. So let's create these 12 parts. So we'll have, we'll make six pieces, okay, and then divide each of those six in half. And that will give you your 12 pieces. So always remember with even numbers, just split it in half and then make the even numbers, uh, even number of pieces. Okay. So 7 twelfths of the time doing math homework. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And math. And then 1 sixth of the time. Now 1 sixth is equal to how many twelfths? And you should know how to get there by now. Um, find the missing factor, what you do to the bottom, you do to the top, and vice versa. So if this is 6 times 2, it's 1 times 2. So we need 2 twelfths that would show the spelling. So take 2 of the twelfths to show the twelling, uh, to show the spelling. <laughs> that was a new word. I made a new word. Um, so the rest of the time she spends reading, how many minutes does she spend reading? So this is the three twelfths uh, of the hour reading. But we know that if we take this hour and we call it 60 minutes, that's our equivalent, that we can take the 60 and divide it by 12 and we get five minutes per section And now we have one, two, three. And that would be 15 minutes reading. And hopefully you were able to do that whole thing on your own without my assistance, because at this point in the year, that's what I'm hoping for, is that you guys can work independently. Okay, next one. Fred has three, 36 marbles. Three marbles. That's boring. 36 marbles. Elise has eight ninths as many marbles as Fred, and Annika has three fourths as many marbles as Elise. Watch the names. How many marbles does Annika have? So let's draw a tape diagram. Now that we have read, we can draw a little bit. Now, Fred, we know the whole. He has 36. 
Okay, no question about that. Elise has not 36. She has eight ninths as many marbles as Fred. So essentially what we're doing is three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. These are Elise's marbles. She has eight ninths as many. So you can do eight ninths of 36 and create this multiplying by fractions, simplify and get the number of marbles that Elise has, okay? And then we have Annika. And Annika has three fourths as many marbles as Elise. And so we have our 32. We have three fourths of 32. And again, cross cancel to get your 24 marbles uh, for Annika. And that's really your final question. Um, for the marbles. Now for the back of this, we've got write and solve a word problem that might be solved using the expressions in the chart below. So again, when you write your own word problems, they're so much better because you can tell the story of what's happening. And you don't have to copy, say, my ideas, which may not make any sense to you. So I'll just talk to you about what you can use for the part and the whole, or what types of items you could join, and then you can fill in the blanks with your own ideas. So um, first of all, I need a fraction of a number. So 18 is going to be the whole, the whole of the set. 18 people, 18 cookies, 18 cars but two thirds of which are being selected. Okay, so if you have something like 18 students um, are on campus, but again, 18 is fixed, okay? You can't change that. But this, you choose, and then you come up with something fun about the 18. So I'm just gonna say like 18 students are on campus in Mrs. Sentness's room. Ha ha, there it is, so they don't get lost. Now, when we have this fraction, this is 2 thirds of 18. So in your problem that you're writing, you're gonna talk about 2 thirds of them of your set, okay, the students, or whatever you have in your word problem. And then what are they doing? Are they wearing hats? Are they wearing shorts? Are they uh, wearing spirit wear? So two thirds of the students are, let's say it's warm out, they're wearing shorts. Okay, so two thirds. So the question then is how many are wearing shorts. And so we're trying to figure out a fraction of the whole. So the solution, you would solve it by multiplying two thirds or a fraction of a whole. This can be simplified. And then you multiply and you have your answer. So a couple things should stay the same and that would be the 18 is the whole and we're taking two thirds of it. So you do have to multiply. You should end up with 12, but it doesn't have to be students depending on what you write about. Make it a good one. Your problems are always much more interesting than mine. Okay, next one. When you have addition, these are not similar parts, generally speaking. If they were similar parts, you would probably do times two. So 26 times two or 34 times two. But since they're different size groups, that's why we add, we're putting them together. So we have to do this first. And in your word problem, you have to write about this happening first because the sum must be done because it's in parentheses before you take five sixths of that. So think about 
two different groups of something that you can put together and then you can take five out of the six parts that are being identified for something else. So let's just say um, if, if you know of kids in middle school, okay, sometimes they go to DC. So let's say middle school parents are meeting about the DC trip. Okay, they're meeting about the DC trip. So we have two different groups. We've got the seventh grade parents and the eighth grade parents. That's my two groups. So let's say 26 of the seventh grade parents but also, what's the other number? 34 of the 8th grade parents attended. And you can talk about, it doesn't have to be the parents. Obviously, it can be, you know, different groups of something. If you want to write about fish, write about fish. Um, now you have to take the fraction. So 5 sixths of all the parents, remember you have to have all because that's what sum means. Did not have the paperwork completed or maybe they haven't paid yet. Uh, did not complete paperwork. And so now the question is what number, like how many because I'm doing the fraction of the whole. So the question then should be something like this. How many parents did not, okay, because we're asking about right here, did not have proper paperwork? Okay, and so we really need to do the addition first First, because it's in parentheses, then we're going to multiply it by 5 sixths. So uh, sometimes I'll just get lazy and I just move things over. Okay, so we have 60, and so we're really taking 5 sixths of 60. And since I see that 60 and 6 are both very compatible, then I end up being able to cross cancel and I get 50 over one. And so it's 50 parents do not have paperwork. Okay. And this is the last one. Gosh, these videos have been fun. Um, click subscribe, come back again, or tell your siblings and friends who are going into fifth grade that they can follow along with these videos, and I hope they're helpful for next year. Um, I will probably try to add a few videos and perhaps work on the homework next year now that I have a little bit, uh, hopefully we'll have a little bit more time. Um, okay, last problem here. So now we have a whole. Subtraction is a little bit different. You have to start with the whole, and then you're going to take pieces from it. Okay, so that's going to be a little bit trickier. Um, seven has to be the total, so we're not going to end up with anything larger than seven as our answer. So if you think about things that can be broken into fractions, like say sandwiches, like Subway sandwiches or something, then uh, you can start with your seven sandwiches and let's, we're going to have a party. We're going to have an end of the year party and we're going to get seven sandwiches. Seven sub sandwiches. Mmm. That could be really delicious. I have been ordered for a party. A party. Uh, oh, but let's see. We have to take away. So let's um, let's have something something falls on the floor <laughs> five twelfths now they're they're cut up into these pieces five twelfths of one 
falls on the floor. And half of another is eaten, who should eat that? By the cook. <laughs> Payment for job well done. How many sandwich, how many sandwiches are left? Okay, or what fraction of the total sandwiches are left? So if you take your seven, and we have to do this fraction work first. Okay, and we're going to subtract. Now I'm, I need a, an equivalent fraction because you cannot add or subtract unless you have equivalent parts. So I'm going to have my 5 twelfths plus how many twelfths? You should know 6 twelfths. That makes 11 twelfths. Now that's what I'm taking from the 7. You just bring that down and 7 minus 11 twelfths. Now you know when you subtract you have to go down to the previous number and then try to complete it. What's missing here? 1. And that's how you get your answer. So 6 and 1 12 sandwiches are left. That's still plenty for the party if they're divided into 12 pieces. Lots of people can eat those 6 sandwiches. So anyway, Yay! Job well done! Good job! Congratulations! You're all moving on to sixth grade and I hope you find some good videos in sixth grade. If I had sixth grade books, I would make sixth grade videos, but I don't have one. So anyway, thanks for being great subscribers. You guys are awesome and I will see you hopefully on another video sometime. Bye now!